So Brian came out with a video that he talked about line arrays and that video has uh, brought a lot of, uh, I guess you could say questions and I want to talk about it. I want to talk about in, in my opinion on line arrays or compact uh, compact arrays or compact line arrays, mini line arrays. I've heard different names, but we'll get to that in one second. Night. DJs come out at night. They are the masters of sound. They walk among us listening to sounds. Well, of the welcome back. We Hopefully you enjoyed the intro over there. My name's Buddy. I'm a wedding DJ here in suburban Chicago. And I've been in the DJ business for quite a while. And I can go through a lot of things. I have gone through a lot of things. I've had gone through a lot of speakers, actually. Uh, I know uh, my lovely wife who works with me in the business. Uh, she's one of the handles of finances, so she knows what we pay for things. And I don't like to buy, let's say, uh, very cheap stuff because everything costs a good amount of money. It's nothing's cheap. Uh <laughs> And it, it's it's one of the things that um, when you own your own business and you have to pay bills, you try to find stuff that works very well and you can make it work for a good long while. And you always look at what is, what is the next thing, what's going to make you stand out different than other DJs. A couple of things with uh, Brian. I have a long relationship with him as far as uh, watching him on YouTube. And then a few years ago, I got to... Uh, know him and became friends with him and he is a friend i've got a chance to hang out with him and uh always love talking to him I actually just talked to him uh last night <laughs> and it's it's one of the things i do talk to him quite a bit at least a few times a week to say the least and when he came with this video uh the uh truth about compact arrays uh is the compact array trend over I, i'm like oh this is interesting and i watched the video and I know there are a lot of people out there that there are some people out there who don't like arrays for whatever the reason is. And I'm not saying I'm not here to sell you, say you have to have them or whatever. I'm just giving you my opinion, my two cents, and what I've run into using them for many years. And to give you some context on what I've had, um, when I first started the business, not when I first started, I was DJing. When I first started DJing, that was friends' audio systems. It was not mine. And there was a big law before I went back into it and started the business. When I first started the business, I had a pair of JBL uh, JRX 115s with a Crown Amplifier 1000 uh, watt amp. And then I've run into problems with the uh, tweeters, kept them popping. And I wanted to go power, so I got a set of the second generation Eons. Those speakers, you know, lasted a good long while. I still had the JRX and used them as well. And I replaced the tweeters, and that this is how I found Brian. Uh, I found him and when he put a video up on his channel, which is one of his older videos, how he hot-rodded a pair of JRX with some uh, different tweeters. And I'm like, oh, this dude knows what he's talking about. He's he feel he feels the same thing I feel and feels the pain of constantly having to replace tweeters on a speaker that I don't overly drive. I don't want to be loud. And that's one of the big things. I I like clarity. I want to be clean. I want stuff to be people to hear what's going on, hear me make announcements or say something, or my wife, which also works with me, uh, as well as speeches, people, you know, making speeches at a wedding. I primary do weddings and i'm in the chicago market i'm in the western burbs and i cover northern illinois and the chicago area so it's something that i am one of the guys who likes to have stuff that sounds really clean and clear i don't like to be overly loud i don't want to uh drive people crazy and uh, blow people's eardrums out and make them feel like they're in our front row of a concert. And speaking of concert, I know a lot of people get mad when they hear line array for 
you know, these speakers, but that's what a lot of manufacturers call them on their website. If you go to a lot of their websites, they'll say line array. And it's different than the line arrays used at concerts, and I know that, but I'm going by what the manufacturer calls them. You know, some people will call them compact arrays. I've heard other names for them. I've heard people call them lollipop speakers. I, I guess so. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the things that uh, I've heard people say a lot of things. I've had people tell me that the speakers don't throw. They, you can't, you can't do a large amount of people. You can't do this and can't do that. So is one of the things that I will go into a little more in depth in a minute, but it's one of the things I, I want you to understand that I started out with two-way speakers. After Eons, um, I got a pair of PRX, JBL PRX 615s, also a Crown amplifier. And I then got a set of Yorkville subs. I bought them used. They're a dual 10 inch sub powered. And those things were heavy as all heck. They were 95 pounds and getting in and out of the vehicle was just heavy. They I had, um, I had uh, little furniture casters, the little wooden, um, you can call it a dolly for furniture. Uh, I'd put them on and then roll it in with that and then take them off and then put them back on to roll them out to our van and put them back in our van. And it's one of the things that um, it always, 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 always was just heavy, heavy stuff. And, you know, a lot of the cabinets, the PRX is wood, the Yorkvilles are wood, and the... Uh, JRX are wood. They're carpeted. Uh, the Eons for plastics are a little bit less weight, but they're a thick, heavy plastic, and I got the second generation of those. And with the PRX, the Eons, I stopped using the JRX because just because I didn't want to deal with an amplifier or run the speak on. And, you know, that's not bad. They were decently loud. They were nice and clear. But the Eons had a little bit more power, uh, I'd have to worry about running a separate amplifier, running speak on cables and having limited distance. And I can't do some of the things that I wanted to do with them. And the PRX, again, made life easier and simpler because I can just plug them in, uh, plug an XLR in and, and rock and roll versus, you know, going on to uh, run an amplifier and, you know, run uh, XLR to an amplifier and from amplifier to the speakers run and speak on and so forth and so on and is you know basically doubling the work so after i um kind of retired to jrx i um i uh used the prx and the ants for years and then i got a set of srx so i wanted something a little bit more stronger than the prx and I went to the next size up, the SRX. So basically, I ran the gambit of JBL. I had um, Eons. I had PRX. I had J uh, SRX. I didn't have. A, I didn't go to VTX. I didn't go to that that end. Uh, that probably, um, yeah, that right there. Uh, I would probably never see myself needing to go into that. It's just. Those are beasts. That's, that, that's, again, concert-level sound. I, I don't need concert-level sound. I'm not doing events of, like, five or 600 people. Uh, and the the PRX are a good speaker. The SRX is even a stronger speaker. I mean, the XRX is very powerful. And did that for a long time. Well, between... The Eon, the first generation, uh, second generation Eon, and I went and got a set of the 615s. I had Eon die. It was cheaper to replace and then repair it uh, because uh, JBL and Infinite Wisdom decided to um, uh, basically hot glue in the tweeter into the cabinet for whatever reason versus, you know, screwing it in and make it easy replaceable. So got a pair of 615s. And I've used the 615s for like ceremonies and used the Eons, the, the second gen for ceremonies. 
And I saw a video on YouTube for the, um, now it's a long name because it's multiple, it's a couple brands, but it is through Sennheiser. And they had a collaboration with K Ray. K Ray is an Italian company that makes line arrays. And they made a blue line speaker. And this blue line speaker I saw on YouTube and the video I saw was it was at one of the expos. I want to say NAM, if I remember correctly. I had to look at the video. It's been a while. But uh, the guy was playing guitar, singing into a microphone, and the speaker was behind him. And that kind of like intrigued me. I'm like, how can you do that? It, you know, that's pretty cool using the speaker as a monitor as well as using it for music. And yeah, I EQ and can ring out a microphone so you don't get as much feedback. But I always, you know, was always hesitant. I'm like, eh, I, I, I want to get one of these. I found what the cost was. I told Tracy. She said that was crazy. But I talked her into it. <laughs> and we ordered it. It was not cheap. It was like, I want to say $1,600. This is going back a few years. And got it. And that has been our speaker for ceremonies for years now and unfortunately they don't make that speaker anymore it's an eight inch woofer it's a wood cabinet the top drivers on top uh is a metal cabinet the two halves are connected by a basically a sub hole and then you have a speak on cable going from top and bottom which again i dealt with jrx i dealt with speak on cables for passive stuff very easy simple and Fell in love with the technology. Fell in love with the speaker. Learned a lot about the technology. Never really had problem with distance. I always filled an area with sound. And I've used it outdoors. And I've used it uh, with some pretty decent amount of distance between me, where the speaker's at, and where the guests are at for a wedding and never had anyone say, oh, well, yeah, that speaker can hear what was going on. And one of the things like I do, and I'm one of those crazy people, you can say that um, I like to hide everything. So I do lapel microphones. I like to hide things and, and so people don't see where things are at. So I'm one of those DJs who will, hide speakers in bush areas or behind things uh, just to make sure, you know, make sure the sound comes out, like, you know, hide it through uh, behind a fabric of some kind or hide it uh, behind, you know, um, just enough behind a bush that the sound comes through. It's not muffled or anything like that. And it's, it's one of the things I like doing that kind of style of things. And having a line array, I can kind of keep the speaker back from back up by me uh, out of the picture out of the way of the couple and had the area filled with sound very nicely and I have I loved how it sounded well in 2019 I bought a pair of RCF J8s I was looking I was looking at line arrays I'm like I want to get some more I like how these speakers are the other thing also I was looking at is the weight of taking a, a a PRX or SRX and throwing it on top of a speaker stand and having a tripod and having a scrim. And yeah, I had scrims. I still have them. I have scrims from Scrim King. I still have the hooks on speaker uh, stands. Uh, and I have to, you know, raise the speaker stand up. A couple of them I have crank up. I have air assist. I have all these different speaker stands. And it's one of the things that I really do love the fact that on an array i could put the speaker down on a floor put a pole in put a top on done and over with i can raise and lower and adjust it just like i can with a two-way speaker i've never ran into a problem of it not being heard in a big area and i know some speakers, and again, this is known, your speaker known technology. Some manufacturers are very wide cast. They don't throw very well because they use reflective technology. Versus RCF is a wide cast, use a little bit of reflective technology, but it's mostly forward and filling. 
And that's the thing is that that's why I got the J8s. And I started using the J8s instead of my PRX. My PRX, I still have. My Eons, my 615s, I sold them actually this year. They were in storage for years. Um, my SRX, my subs, I sold those a while ago. And I still have PRX just in case I need a two-way. I, I have one set. So it's not like I'm totally out of the game, but I don't use them. They're not a primary speaker. They're in my storage ca uh, my storage uh, uh, facility. The J8 started me down the path of using line arrays. In 2020, because of the size of weddings being smaller, and I wanted something different than a J8 as far as I'm in a smaller speaker, for smaller weddings, which we were running into because of 2020. I uh, then uh, ordered a pair of Maui 5s. And I saw Brian talk about Maui 5s. And, you know, he talked about how, you know, this is what the Maui 5 does. And I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. And I'm like, 120 SPL. I'm like, that's pretty decently loud. That's not crazy loud, but I can do smaller weddings with it. So in 2020... I'm one of the uh, people who went out and got the um, Maui Fives. Had waited a while for it because you know everything was out of stock. Uh, I ordered the bags at the same time. Ordered the uh, speakers, and I think, if I remember correctly, the bags came in June, and I ordered all that in March, uh, the beginning of March. And I remember going through everything and ordering all that. And then when everything came in, uh, the speakers came. When the speakers came in June, the bags came in August. So it shows you how long I had wait. Order stuff in March. And yeah, it was it was a long wait. It was a long, long wait. And I wanted it for that year for, especially since the weddings we were doing, you were limited. So and there were smaller weddings. So Still use the J8s. Oh, they perform phenomenally. Um, but I wanted something, again, smaller, a little more compact, a little easier to move around. And over the years, I've used the Maui 5s for about a third of our weddings a year. So a third of my weddings, I use Maui 5s. And they're great for, you know, a, 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 a mid-sized room, 120, 130 people max. Never had anyone complain. I've done weddings, 130 people in a, in a mid-sized room. Not a problem. People heard it, the speeches. You know, one side of the room, we were on. The other side of the room, they're on for a head table. Uh, I just did a wedding this uh, this year. I got a pair of white ones this year, and there's a video on on here about that uh, unboxing. And I had a wedding this year, 35 people. Big room, 35 people. And even in that big room, we went to the other side of the room. You can hear the music perfectly and clearly on the other side. Was there a booming bass knocking you out? No, but you could hear the bass. On the dance floor, it was a nice thump. It wasn't crazy hard. It's not going to thump like an 18. It's an 8-inch woofer, but it does give a nice, tight little bass. The uh, J8s also I've used. I got a set of white ones after a while. So I have both black uh, J8s. I have a J8 mix and a J8 regular on both black and white. And the mix I've actually used a few times, the, the mixer itself, for live instruments. Plug right into that. I've done sound for uh, someone singing uh, for a first dance off the J8 mix. I've done, um, you know, support of a keyboardist off the J8 mix. I've used that mixer on there a few times. It's a nice little extra tool to have on the speaker and having those extra inputs. And it sounds kind of funny that, oh, well, you know, why don't you go through your board? It, it sounds perfect in that, especially where I'm at and how I have things set up. I am not one of the DJs who goes from my controller into a mixer and then mixer out. I don't want the extra chain link in the chain. It, to me, it's it, it, to me, it adds complications. Complications can get yourself in trouble. That's my thinking. 
So I go from the controller directly out to the speakers. I run a XZ, XZ uh, from Pioneer. Uh, I have two microphone inputs with a feedback suppressor, plus I have two additional channels. So I could run up to four microphones, and I've run up three microphones, no problem, on my XZ. Uh, and, and I've run uh, my SX2, which before the XZ, I've run three microphones. My Before that, when I ran... And I still have, I still have the X, uh, SX2 as well. Um, it's now my secondary, my backup, but I still have my CDJs. And that right there has two mic inputs and it has four inputs in the mixer. I could run four microphones on it and still two channels for music. So it's stuff that I have no problem. I have a three band EQ. I can EQ stuff. I can adjust things no different than having, I have a Yamaha 16 channel. I have a uh, Alan, uh, Alan Heath little six channel. Um, I used that for uh, a few events when I used my little tiny Hercules controller. But, you know, the next uh, coming, two upcoming events, like I have a wedding beginning of, um, of December. This has come out before Thanksgiving. Uh, I have a wedding in December. I'm going to use, you know, Maui Fives. I have another one, middle of December, Maui Fives. Why? Because they're nice, compact, and they give nice sound. And I have to worry about it. And again, they I never had anyone complain that, oh, well, those are too quiet. Those are too weak. Never had a problem. I had, uh, in 2022, we did at a convention center down in the south suburbs, Tinley Park Convention Center. And that right there had 270 people. I did two J8s on that and cover that room without a problem. I, this year, I, again, I got the Maui Fives in white because I wanted a white set. And I also this year got a set of, from uh, DB Technologies, I got a set of ES-1002s because I was talking to another DJ. He's like, oh man, these things are great. And he was talking, we're going through stuff and talking about stuff. And I wanted another speaker. I wanted to have that third level for those, you know, times here and there where I wanted to have a bigger speaker than the J8. Because the J8 to me is even my PRX. And my PRX was, was, you know, my main speaker I use for most things. I had my Eons, which are kind of like my Maui 5s. And I had my SRX in case I had something big. But I got the DBs dual 12 inch subwoofer wood cabinet the top has a bunch of drivers uh and i've used those on a couple gigs now this year and they're good and heavy and they do have throw they will fill room no problem whatsoever i have learned one thing about the line arrays that if you do them right you eq them right you make them sound really good they will cover no problem. And here's one other thing to think about line arrays as well when you're looking at stuff. There is a bunch of companies that make them, including, you know, there you can go t and find them. Uh, but also there's, you know, Rockville has a set of line arrays. And most of your manufacturers out there that do speakers, sound reinforcement, they have at least one or two line arrays. And they also have, you know, two-way cabinets. And I'm not saying that line arrays are the best and you should get a bunch and you should forego. You have to do what's best for you. It, it's your business. At the end of the day, it, you're the one who owns it. You're the one who pays the bills, not me. I'm just giving my two cents of what I've run into with line arrays and how I've switched from a two-way cabinet to a line array and have not really looked back at it and have not looked and said, oh, my God, I need to switch back. And I've talked to DJs who, you know, they look at the Maui's, they're like, oh, yeah, those are too small. I'm like, have you used them? And have you used, you know, a J8? I know people who use the uh, uh, Evolve 50s or Evolve 30s, and they love them. You know, they love them. And again, they're a good speaker. And that's the big thing is that if you're going to spend some money, listen to it, be open-minded, and try it. Get a speaker, try it out. Now, if you like the content you have here today, down below, say something. Say, hey, 
you know, this is what I think, or, hey, you're wrong, or, hey, you're right, or, hey, whatever. Just one thing, please, do not bash any manufacturer. We're not here to say this brand is better than this brand, or I'm just telling the brands I have, the brands I like. It's like what kind of car you like to drive. We're not here to trash anyone. We're here to have positive talk and a positive conversation. The other thing also is that make sure that uh, you like the channel. And if you like content like this and talking about gear and, you know, other things in the DJ world, including what do you do after you get done with a gig? You know, where do you go? Do you go to McDonald's, Burger King, or somewhere else? I mean, what kind of ice cream do you like to eat? <laughs> Those kind of crazy things, as well as everything else. We talk about this over on the DJ Roundtable Show, which is also here, and I host every uh, Tuesday night on Twitch. And then we have it live here on Mondays. Um the video and I have a lot of great guest DJs to come on there as well as our regular crew of DJs who hang out and we talk for about an hour, but I hope that you enjoy yourself. I hope that you enjoyed. And I hope that you, maybe if you're not, if you're not a person who uses line race, maybe you may, Hey, maybe I'll try a set. Maybe I'll try one. Don't be afraid. Have you ever a two way cabinet? Yeah, that's the only speaker you want. Hey, that's not a problem. No hard feelings. I'm just telling you how I've run into it and what I've done with it and how I feel about it. It's my two cents. And I'm giving you my two cents, rub my two pennies together and hand it over to you. You can do whatever you want with it. But again, be nice. That's what I got you. Thank you so much. They are the masters of sound. They walk among us, listening to sounds of the world, making track in their mind. 